It's been over three months since the Starship IFT-2 flight, and now we're on the brink of witnessing IFT-3. Just a few days ago, Elon Musk confidently declared an 80% chance of achieving orbit in Flight 3. To demonstrate this confidence, SpaceX has unveiled numerous significant upgrades on ships S-28 and B-10. So, what are the key changes and upgrades for the main characters of the upcoming flight compared to previous prototypes? In today's episode of Great SpaceX, let's delve into these upgrades that will propel the world's largest rocket towards orbit in IFT-3. A few days ago, following a setback during wet dress rehearsal testing, both B-10 and S-28 were relocated from the OLM to other facilities. B-10 was transported to Mega Bay 1, likely for specific upgrades aimed at resolving issues encountered during the rehearsal. Meanwhile, S-28 was shifted to Pad B in preparation for the static fire test. However, the time for action has arrived once once again, the FAA recently announced the closure of the mishap investigation related to Starship IFT-2, signaling the imminent arrival of IFT-3. Meanwhile, in Florida, a competitor of Starship, New Glenn, has conducted cryogenic testing. And indeed, B-10 has been rolled back to the launch pad, indicating a step towards resuming testing. S-28 follows suit shortly. Both prototypes will be restacked to proceed with the remaining wet dress rehearsal test. Considering these developments, it seems that the recent period may mark the final major modifications for the S-28 and B-10 prototypes. Therefore, this moment serves as an opportune time to discuss the notable changes across all Starship components. In the recent notification regarding the conclusion of the mishap investigation, the FAA outlined 17 corrective actions for SpaceX to undertake. Ten of these actions are focused on the Starship, while the remaining seven pertain to Super Heavy. For Starship, the FAA FAA specified changes such as hardware redesign to enhance durability and reduce complexity and leakage risk. Operational adjustments, updates to flammability analyses, and the installation of additional fire protection, guidance systems, and modeling updates were also included. Regarding Super Heavy, hardware redesigns aim to improve filtration and reduce slosh, control system modeling has been upgraded, and SpaceX has re-evaluated the engine system based on flight data from IFT-2 along with enhancing engine control algorithms. Now, let's delve deeper into the noteworthy details starting from the top down. Firstly, focusing on Starship S-28, a notable change is observed in the nose cone. The vents have transitioned from a circular shape to a bell shape with a downward orientation. This alteration likely relates to attitude control or tank settling thrusters. The new positioning is expected to facilitate processes associated with the liquid oxygen header tank, particularly considering that the upcoming flight of Starship will involve transferring fuel from the header to the main tank. On the flip side, there have been notable changes to the heat shield layout. A flat edge line has been introduced, resulting in a neater configuration that may contribute to more even protection of the prototype. Additionally, at the flap aero cover, there has been a reduction in the number of small heat shield tiles. This adjustment serves to streamline the manufacturing process by minimizing the need for cutting and producing smaller tiles. Moreover, it helps to decrease the amount of exposed gaps, thereby enhancing the vehicle's protection. SpaceX has also included heat shield tiles on the underside of the forward flap aero covers, providing more comprehensive protection to various components. Beneath the vents, there has been an increase in the number of Starlink terminals and they are now installed more prominently compared to their integration into the payload bay in S-25. This alteration aims to improve the ship's connectivity during flight, mitigating signal loss issues experienced in previous. Moving on to the payload section of S-28, there have been noticeable changes. The door of the payload bay appears to have additional details compared to S-25. Removable locking plates have been added around the door to prevent unintended openings, thereby ensuring the safety of internal payloads. The details of S-28's main tank have undergone significant changes. The vents in the methane tank have returned to their previous position, located near the middle instead of near the edges of the heat shield as seen in the prototypes before S-25. Below these vents, the pressure valves for the liquid oxygen tanks now consist of only one valve on the left side of the ship, as opposed to two on both sides. Conversely, two small diverted thrusters in the liquid oxygen tank have been moved closer to the heat shield. Additionally, 
Additionally, the two bell-shaped structures used to switch the propellant vents in S25 have been completely removed from S28. Around the tank hatches, the black ring has disappeared and been replaced by a more fixed and firm structure. While the reason for this change is unclear, it may help mitigate the effects of fuel on other systems and optimize the fuel loading and venting process. The overall propellant tanks of the ship have been reinforced with approximately 24 internal stringer columns installed to enhance durability, especially for protecting the tanks inside. Small welds across the prototype have also been altered to further increase the reliability of the ship. Furthermore, S28 features a change in assembly method. The stacking order will now follow a top-down approach instead of being assembled into two halves. This adjustment will ensure that cranes are always attached to the ship when stacked, reducing preparation time for lifting and other associated steps. Let's take a deeper look into the notable upgrades on the super heavy booster, which has undergone several significant changes. Firstly, let's focus on the dome with a new design for the common bulkhead. The domes appear to be more regular, featuring a unified structure instead of the pyramid shape seen in B9. This upgrade, possibly made of stretch formed panels, might lead to changes in the amount of fuel inside, although likely not significantly. Additionally, stabilization points have been altered compared to the previous structure in B9, with with the addition of robust steel to enhance, you guessed it, stability. Externally, B-10's grid fin system has undergone a minor change, reverting to the old design by removing the thin steel strip at the edges, which was present only in B-9. This adjustment likely simplifies the design without significant impact. Similar to S-28, B-10 will also see a redesign of the Starlink terminal, transitioning from a circular to a square structure with black material covering the top. While the specific effects of this change remain unclear, it may contribute to better monitoring of the booster and prevent signal loss during flight. Lastly, let's discuss another crucial system, the Raptor engine. The most significant change in the S-28 engine will be the adoption of the new electric TVC or thrust vector control system instead of the hydraulic unit system in previous prototypes. While this change was implemented since S-26, S-28 will be the first booster to fly with this new system. Based on previous analyses, this upgrade is expected to enhance engine reliability, ensuring smooth operation at all times, particularly in preventing engine issues post-separation, similar to those encountered in IFT2. Additionally, this change helps reduce mass and simplifies the design, contributing to overall efficiency and performance improvements. With the replacement of the hydraulic system, the power unit associated with it has been removed, along with the manifolds connected to the central engine. Consequently, protective shields are no longer necessary, resulting in further reductions in excess weight and complexity. Furthermore, in early February, the engines in S-28 were swapped out. While the reasons for this change remain unclear and whether it's related to the aforementioned upgrades is uncertain. Currently, the prototype has not undergone a static fire test and it's possible that it will be conducted later as the long road closure has been canceled. These are the notable changes in the hardware of Starship Flight 3. There are likely many other minor changes that will also impact the success of the flight. If you're aware of any additional additional notable upgrades, feel free to share them in the comment section down below. These upgrades are indeed remarkable. The dedication and hard work of SpaceX engineers are evident in the continuous improvements made to both S-28 and B-10, even just a few months after the IFT-2 flight. While some changes are immediately apparent, others may require further explanation from SpaceX. However, every modification, no matter how small, plays a crucial role in advancing towards the goals of IFT-3. The journey to orbit is nearing its culmination, and it's an exciting time to anticipate and count down to that momentous achievement. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.